Fritz. The Bears are who we thought they were. The Bears. The Bears. I am the great Cornholio. We'll see what happens. Uh, playoffs. See, no. Oh, Sean McDonough, Jay Villas. Goats. Um, can you play a song? I'm <laughs> cool. Put my mic on. I'm calling both games. Oh, 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 baby. Are you so oh. nice? Goes down the field for Smith. Oh, he caught it. Seattle. We're getting ready for Cincinnati. NFL Week 3. I wouldn't say it was great. I, I wouldn't say that. NFL Week 4 could be better. There are some good matchups definitely on tap. There are some, there are some good games in Week 3. And Chiefs fans are probably not so happy with the way their team played in Week 3. They played one of the, probably, if not the, I, I don't want to say worst team, but they were having some struggles. You know, the, the, the Indianapolis Colts came into week three, tying the Texans and getting shut out by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not exactly a great start at all. So they came into week three and they saw, they looked up the schedule and saw the Kansas City Chiefs were rolling into town and the Chiefs, who had arguably been one of the hottest teams in the league entering the, entering the game, it was not looking too great for the Indianapolis Colts. And the Chiefs came out and didn't exactly look all that great, which was rather surprising, I thought. And when it's all said and done, the Chiefs lose 20-17 to against the Colts. And if that wasn't weird enough, Patrick Mahomes got into a scuffle, got into a bit of an argument on the sideline. And that's not something we've seen from Mahomes. You know, other than the trying to get the team motivated and try to get the team, you know, going, right? The motivational, like, hey, guys, let's, let's get it going here, you know? This was not, hey, guys, let's get it going here. This was... I'm mad at you, and I don't agree with you, and you're an idiot type of thing. And it was with not Andy Reid, but Eric Bieniemy, and a major theme in the head coaching, you know, in the off season, you know, with head coaching openings and head coaches being fired, and this, that, and the other thing was why isn't Eric Bieniemy getting hired? And I was fielding questions on that, and I was I was asking questions on that as well. I was. You know, I, I was just as clueless as any of you are. Because I look at what he's done at Kansas City and I thought, I, you know, he's good enough to be a, a head coach, right? I mean, if Urban Meyer get, is getting a job at Jacksonville and Lovey Smith is getting another job in Houston and, and David Culley gets hired and, you know, you get the point. If those guys are getting jobs in the NFL... Eric Bieniemy definitely is at least in the conversation and at least, you know, I would say has at least earned, you know, earned, earned it, right? I mean, I don't know. We may have gotten an insight on that in week three as to why he has not been hired. So let me run this back for you. As Kansas City's week three game against Indianapolis was not going so well. A second and 20 is what the Chiefs were up against towards the end of the first half. And Eric Bieniemy called a running play. They ran it up the middle and let the clock expire going into the halftime break trail. Mahomes wasn't happy about that. He wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. And the two got into it on the sideline. Andy Reid had to come over and break the two apart. And it, it looked like it was a pretty fired up exchange between the two. Former Kansas City Chiefs running back LaShawn McCoy weighed in on Twitter. Quote, all the enemy does is argue with the players. He knows nothing about passing or play calling. And that, I thought at least, I thought that came out of nowhere. I thought that kind of came out of left field, you might say. Going back though, looking at it, McCoy has not exactly been the biggest fan of Eric Bieniemy. He has spoken out against Bieniemy. In recent, you know, this past May, on Sirius XM's "I Am a- uh, I Am Athlete Tonight," that, that's a really weird 
title for a show. Uh, in May, McCoy had this to say, quote, he talks to players a certain way, he, meaning the enemy, talks to players a certain way, and some players would take it. I wouldn't take it. There's some questions I'm going to ask. Everyone's accountable. It's not because he's a black coach. That's not the reason he's not getting hired. No one hires him because they know what type of coach he really is. Again, those are LaShawn McCoy's comments, not mine. And again, if you're all hearing this for the first time like I did this morning, or read this for the first time, I was shocked, as I was. And I read this and I thought, wow, I have not heard that. I have not heard any player speak out against Eric Bietemi and say, hey, like he's, he, he's not a good coach. And I understand that, you know, players that are on the team currently are not exactly going to come out and be like, yeah, this guy's terrible. Because you're not going to do that. You're just not. But you look at players that have left the organization, Tyreek Hill, um, Le'Veon Bell, Tyron Matthew, uh, Demarcus Robinson, Byron Pringle, Sammy Watkins. There are plenty of players that are no longer on the Chiefs that played when Biennemi was there. And I have not, I have not, I have yet to hear anything negative about the enemy from those former players. Now, might they just be being respectful and keeping it to themselves? Maybe. But I can't speculate on that. I have no clue. So you might, you might be a little surprised by this. And you might be thinking, wow, that's really shocking because at least, and, and, and you know, this happens no matter what. Where they're going to turn, where the NFL media is going to turn this into, you know, look, look at Urban Meyer getting a job. Look at, you know, so-and-so getting a job. Look at this guy and that guy. And, oh, Brian Flores got fired. And, and they all resolve it back to one central argument. And we all know what that is. I don't have to say that. And people will say, oh, that's the reason that the enemy's not getting hired. And, okay, I was a little hesitant on that. Because everybody has their reasons for not hiring. And I, and again, I could just be very oblivious to this fact. And, you know, okay, there are probably some bad teams out there like the Dolphins, right? I will agree with you that the Dolphins' ownership probably is not the, how do I say, they don't have the most modern mind. You know, I, I guess you'll, you, you could say that. That's one way of putting it. But there are definitely teams that are not exactly, you know, this isn't exactly, you know, the 40s and, 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 you know, the 1800s where, you know, we didn't let people play or, or coach teams for a certain reason. I would like to think that we are not that society, that that's not who we are. And again, I might just be being too optimistic and, and being too, you know, sunshine and butterflies over the whole, uh, over the world. And I get that the world's not exactly a great place. There are bad people out there. But there are good people out there too. Let's not forget that. And so you might be thinking, okay, well, th this might be the reason why Eric Bannamy not getting hired. And McCoy, maybe LaShawn McCoy just had the guts to say it. Maybe he just had the guts to step up and say, hey... This is nothing new. I've seen this happen plenty of times before. Or, <laughs> or, this is just coming from a player who had been a star running back most of his career. I mean, you look at his time in Philadelphia. He was the star running back. And even when in his time in Buffalo, he was the number one guy. And then he comes to Kansas City and he was nothing more than a secondary option. And so maybe all these comments are coming from a player who had been a star running back for most of his career and then became a secondary option at most with Kansas City, and he's butthurt because of it. McCoy was inactive through most of the playoffs in his one year with the Chiefs in 2019, and in his entire season with the Chiefs, he ran for only four touchdowns and 465 yards. To put that into to perspective for you, Lamar Jackson usually gets that in about five games. So that might be part of it. And I understand that maybe that's an easy card to pull to say, oh, you know, he's only mad because he didn't play much in Kansas City and he's just bitter. But you cannot rule that out because <laughs> players are like that. Players are divas. And if Antonio Brown didn't teach you that, then I don't know what will. 
It's as simple as that. And does Eric Bieniemy still deserve a head coaching position? I would, I would, I would agree. I would, I would say yes. He probably does. He at least deserves a shot. Because you look at some of the other options that, you know, some of the other guys that have given have been given the opportunity. I would say Eric Bieniemy is a little bit better than than those guys. I would say that Eric Bieniemy is definitely better than. David Culley. I would say that Eric Bieniemy is better than Urban Meyer. I would say that Eric Bieniemy is better than Nathaniel Hackett. Just to name a few. But are they calling Andy Reid and former players and upper management and saying, hey, this guy Bieniemy could be the guy for us? Because he's interviewed. He's interviewed for positions. But I wonder if teams that are thinking of hiring him are calling the Chiefs and they're saying, hey, what's the word on Eric? Is he a guy that can lead a team to success? Can he be, can he, you know, we've seen what he can do as a coordinator. And just like going from college to the NFL is a big step, going from a coordinator to a head coach is a is a big jump as well. Teams might be calling and saying, hey, can Eric take that big step and lead this team to success? And the Chiefs might be saying, well, the Chiefs might be saying no because they're selfish and they want the enemy as the offensive coordinator because of all the great things they've done. Or they're saying, no, the enemy is going to be the, the head coach when Andy Reid retires. Or they're saying exactly what LeSean McCoy is saying, and they're saying no, he, he's he's not a good leader. And you know, sure he has his his good times and his good moments, but it's outweighed by the bad and it's outweighed by the negative. This is all speculation by me, mind you, and I don't know anything that's going on behind the scenes, as neither does anybody else. But this whole, I mean, again, let's think about it this way as well. That was Patrick Mahomes you were arguing with and yelling at. That was Patrick Mahomes who, again, Mahomes, sure, he's a young quarterback and might, he might be a little bit cocky and, and overconfident. Mahomes was drafted in 2017 and has taken his team to two Super Bowls and has won one of them. I think if not every year, he he has been the starting quarterback in Kansas City. So Mahomes has established himself as a pretty good quarterback, we'll say, right? You're not nobody's going to to tell you unless they hate the Chiefs. Nobody's going to say no. Mahomes is terrible. He stinks. You talk about Patrick Mahomes, and people are saying, yeah, you know, he knows a thing or two about football. And if you're a coordinator and you're going to argue and fight with Patrick Mahomes about that. After Mahomes just kind of said, hey, what was that about? You know, why aren't we being more aggressive? Why are we running the ball on second and 20 and running the clock out when we're losing to the Indianapolis Colts? That's a valid question. That is a very valid question to ask. And if you're going to get into an argument with Mahomes over that, it could just be a one-off. It could be. But it could also be what happens off the field and what happens behind the scenes leaking out into the limelight and leaking out into the public view. So, again, this this could be the reason why the enemy's not getting hired or it could just be an overreaction by everybody and everybody needs to take a step back and realize, hey, this is the NFL. Arguments happen. But again, this wasn't like you're getting into an argument with Justin Fields where Justin Fields is trying to tell you how to do your job. And Mahomes didn't exactly charge at Bien-Ami. He's just He was just frustrated. And I can't blame him for being frustrated. You were losing to the Indianapolis Colts. If I was losing to the Colts after dominating the Cardinals in Week 1 and beating a pretty good Chargers team in Week 2 and being undefeated and on the verge and on the brink, you know, you win that game, you're 3-0. And you lose to the Colts. The Colts are the team that prevents you from going 3-0. and Yeah, I'd be pretty frustrated as well. 
So, again, I can't tell you much more than what I've seen and what I that's what I take from it is that this is the first time I've ever seen something like this between the enemy and a player in a game. So that's really all I can draw from. If I saw this, you know, every year between him and a player, I would say, yeah, this guy is is, is no good. This guy is not a good apple. So, you know, it hasn't been, though. I So I can't say that. But I will definitely be keeping an eye on on this, and I think a lot of people will as well, because this happens in week three of the season, and you have to be wondering if is the enemy starting to get a little bit better that he's not getting a head coaching job when he's stuck as a coordinator at Kansas City. It is, and then frustration losing to the Colts. Like, is this just a everything gets bottled up and it explodes type of deal? Could be. It very well could be. Justin Herbert has been barely playing through his rib cartilage injury, and Mac Jones 